Hey, it's James from Marketing for Restaurants here, and welcome to episode 144 of Secret Source, the restaurant marketing podcast, how to create a restaurant unique selling proposition with example restaurant USPs. Some restaurants are quiet, lose money, and the owner works 70 hours a week. Other restaurants are busy, profitable, and the owners work a few hours a day. What's the difference? They have a secret source. Join James from Marketing for Restaurants as he helps you come up with your recipe for restaurant success, your secret sauce. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. How is everyone going with COVID? Isn't it the exact restaurant apocalypse. So many restaurants doing it so tough. So many restaurants have closed down. It really is a huge tragedy. Talking with restaurants all around the world, so many restaurants are struggling and it's on again, it's off again. As we're doing this podcast now, they're just putting London back down into restrictions on how restaurants can trade. This is happening all around the world and we don't know how long this is going to go on for. So it is very difficult for so many restaurant owners. It's been a little while since the last podcast. I do apologize for that. Where we're based in uh, sunny Australia, down in beautiful Victoria, we had uh, quite a big second wave of cases. And I've been deployed as a part of the federal government support of the Victorian government's response to COVID-19. And that has kept me a little bit busy. But we're here and we're going to do a podcast today on something that I think is really important. That is restaurant unique selling propositions. We are going to look at what they are what they do, why you need one for your restaurant, and most importantly, how to create one. And we'll have a few examples along the way because I think it's one of those things that's a little bit esoteric. And a lot of the research around that talks specifically about restaurant uh, unique selling propositions, there's not many examples. There's one that everyone sort of talks about, and that's Domino's Pizza. We want to go a little bit deeper into that just to give you some ideas about how to create a really, really, really killer restaurant USP. So first off, what is a restaurant USP? So a unique selling proposition, it refers to the unique benefit exhibited by a company service product or brand that enables it to stand out from its competitors. The unique selling proposition must be a feature that highlights product benefits that are meaningful to consumers. Now, it should contain that one feature of your product or experience that most stands out as different from other restaurants that you're competing against. And it's usually a feature that conveys something, a unique benefit to customers. Once you've got your USP, then obviously communicating that unique selling proposition is a key part of the branding and marketing for your restaurant. So when you're thinking about some of the marketing that you want to do, some of the advertising that you want to do for your restaurant, you must be thinking about the proposition to the customer. And we want to get away from just words, product puffery. We see that quite a bit in some of the advertising that gets done for many restaurants. You want the ad copy to say, come to my restaurant for this specific benefit. This is the reason that you are going to come to my restaurant. The proposition must be one that your competitors cannot easily offer. It needs to be unique. Far too often, we see so many people who have what they would have, what they would call a unique selling proposition. It's not really that unique. It's something that a lot of other people are out there trying to do. Lastly, the proposition must be strong enough to move the masses. It's got to attract new customers as well as get your repeat customers to come back in. So for your restaurant's USP, there's three things that it needs to have. First off, it needs to be unique. It needs to sell and it needs to contain a proposition. Now, what's a proposition? A statement or assertion that expresses a judgment or opinion. So let's just go back over those three things. So first off, unique. Far too often, and this is one of uh, our, our team's pet hates when they're talking to a restaurant, what is it that makes your restaurant unique? Well, we have authentic Indian food. 
if we had a dollar for every time a customer said that, then we'd have lots and lots and lots of dollars because it is something that many, many, many people have as their restaurant USP. We have authentic Mexican food. Now, the problem with that is I don't think it is unique in any way, shape or form. Now, it could be unique and we're going to talk a little bit about that when we talk about how to craft your unique selling proposition. Because one thing, and you know, the vast, vast, vast majority of our customers are single location restaurants. Uh, So, and I think the vast majority of our listeners, you know, restaurant owners. So if you're selling authentic Mexican food and you're the only restaurant, the only Mexican restaurant within say 10, 20 miles, then- that could be something that you might want to have as your unique selling proposition. You might want to work on it a little bit more though, because the second thing that you want to uh, have your unique selling proposition do for your restaurant is to sell. It has to be something that your customers want from you. It's got to be something that is going to convert people to coming to thinking about from thinking about your restaurant to coming into your restaurant, from thinking about being a customer to being an actual customer, to putting their hand in their pocket, taking some money out and saying, give me some of your fine food, please, sir. And that proposition, so that's going to be the statement of what it is that you think is going to sell to the customers that you want to bring in. And it is going to be something that your competitors can't do. It is going to be something that gives you a competitive advantage in the marketplace. One thing I do want to stress here just straight up is that when you've got your restaurant USP sorted out, you need to make sure that it aligns with your people, processes and product to make sure that you are walking the walk as well as just talking the talk. You don't want to have your USP as we are Chicago's biggest burgers and then people coming in and saying, "Uh, it's not that big. I came here for a really big burger. I was excited that this was going to be the biggest burger in Chicago, but it's not that big. There's a bigger burger just, you know, but just down the down the street. That's not going to work well for you because people aren't going to come back in. And if word gets around that it's not the biggest burger, and because what is the product that you sell? Is it the burger? Well, no, it's probably the experience of having Chicago's biggest burger. Did you deliver on that experience? No fail that could you know then that's when you start getting all of those bad reviews so you want to make sure that whatever your usp is you make sure that it aligns with your people processes and product so that people come in i'm looking for the biggest burger oh my god this is the biggest burger i have ever seen it's huge that would be the kind of experience where someone has really over delivered on that brand promise of uh the biggest burger so an example of this jamie's italian now Jamie Oliver, cracking good guy. This does so much work around the nutrition space and these cookbooks are great. But Jamie's Italian, part of that brand promise, part of that unique selling proposition was that the food was going to be fresh and it turned out it wasn't that fresh. Part of the quality control process when you're trying to run restaurants in such a, a huge geographic space and Obviously, Jamie wasn't involved in the day-to-day running of it, but that brand promise, that unique selling proposition not being delivered on, that is the kind of thing where people are going to be thinking, ah, you know what, there's probably better places to go. So what is a unique selling proposition for your restaurant? What what are they for? Okay, it's your elevator pitch. It's your 30 seconds of fame. If I saw you in the street and you said, oh, hey, I own a restaurant, it'd be like, hey, cool, tell me about it. What are you going to lead with? What is that one thing that you can do to pitch to me that make me go, wow, that sounds awesome? And this is why, well, it's authentic Indian food. Uh, Is it really? And I don't really need to go to your restaurant for that because there's a restaurant just up the road from me that does authentic Indian food. Well, that I think anyway. So we need to think a little bit more about how you're going to craft your unique selling proposition. And we're definitely going to go into that. But I think that trying to come up with that one thing that makes you different from your competitors that reaches out to your customers The process of thinking about that is a really, really powerful process. And we've actually done that with customers where 
they have altered their business model because they realized that there was nothing that made them unique. And so they've gone back to the drawing board. And whether it's something like using the business model canvas or a SWOT, they've really thought about their business, their restaurant and their customers and how they could reach out to them in a compelling way. Because a really well-crafted, unique selling proposition is going to mean that you're going to be able to find more new customers and you're more likely, when you deliver on that unique selling proposition, you're more likely to be able to turn them into repeat customers. Now, why do you need one? So this is a great question. And I would say straight up, you don't need one. Some restaurants absolutely crush Instagram. And they may not even have a Facebook page. Some restaurants absolutely crush Facebook. And they may not even have a website. And it was interesting. So I was talking to one of our customers, bought a website from us a couple of years ago, Victorian based, really sort of struggling to sort of grind it out now with COVID. And they bought a website from us. I don't know how long ago it was. It seems like two years ago. It probably was two years ago. It is still a landing page because there's been lots of discussion about the menus and the look and all of those sort of things. And one of those, sadly, we see this quite a bit. You know, there was four partners. None of them could really agree. They had very different ideas and we'd gone through multiple really great looking designs that I thought, you know, really said something that was exciting about uh, about their burgers. (laughs) <laughs> they could never get to the point where they were always going through these iterations of menu changes and design changes and lots of fiddling around at the edges. Their website never went went live. And they said, we really get most of our customers on Instagram. So we don't see the website as being really that important for us. And it's really quite obvious. You don't actually have a website. You've just got a landing page that says that your website's going to come soon. Now, we started the conversation off, you know, like, as I do when I'm speaking to all, all of our customers, you know, how's business going? You know, what are the challenges that you're seeing? COVID, you know, pretty obvious. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that one out. They were really struggling with um, the limitations that were put on them and the impact that it was having on their customers. This is a story that's being told around the world, so I don't need to go into the details for you. But they were really struggling. And he said, we get all of our customers from Instagram. Yes, because you don't actually have a website. You don't have something that tells your story on the web. You don't have that funnel that's going to grab people who are looking on the web for a restaurant. Now, across all of our properties, we would have hundreds of thousands of visitors to websites. We know that there's a little company called Google that one or two people in the world sometime maybe go to. All of those people were not finding their restaurant because Google and Facebook and Facebook owns Instagram, well, they don't talk too much. So Google works really hard to say, well, you know what, there's Instagram stuff. If you want to see Instagram stuff, then, you know, download Instagram. What we're about is we're about search and providing people with that information on their websites. So all of that traffic they were missing out on. Long story short, This is the exact same thing with your unique selling proposition. You don't need one. But if you don't have a unique selling proposition for your restaurant, that is just one arm of the marketing strategy that you could be having that to draw in those customers that has been cut off. And this is one of those reasons why a lot of restaurants fail. Because if you think about your marketing strategy as a bit of an octopus, you've got eight arms. Well, if you've got eight arms, they don't need to be that strong because you've got eight arms. We get a bit from Instagram. We get a bit from email. We get a bit from Facebook. We get a bit from search. We get a bit from our letter drops. We get a bit from our partners. We get a bit from our suppliers, our joint marketing events. You know, when you're doing that, You don't have to be a rocket scientist in any of those things. You can do all of those sort of things. You're pedaling pretty hard because you've got a few plates in the air. But all of those sort of things, when it all comes together, it can be a really, really, really powerful engine that drives your restaurant because you've got a truckload of customers coming in and You've got a truckload of reasons for that truckload of customers to come back. And this is where we're starting to build those customers that are coming in five times a year, 10 times 
a year. Maybe they're coming in once a month. Maybe they're coming in once a week. Maybe they're coming in twice a week. How many of those customers have you got that are coming in twice a week? Is your business set up for those customers that are coming in twice a week? How many of those do you need to hit break even? How many of those do you need to make the kind of profit that you want to adequately recompense you for the hours of blood, sweat and tears that you put into your restaurant? That would be my question to you. Your USP could be that one thing that helps you sell. I know. And, you know, this is really interesting. So I've just used that word. And some restaurant owners, a couple of years ago, I was talking to a restaurant owner and he said, you know, my food's so good, I don't need to sell it. You know, people come in here and they love it. And I was like, and how's business going? He goes, well, it's not that good. And it's like, mate, it's probably not good enough to get people to go out and sell for you. I'm pretty busy. I lead a busy life. I'm like a lot of people. I very rarely go and rave about a restaurant that is just absolutely mind-blowing. So it's really hard to find new customers, turn them into repeat customers if you're not actually going to try and embed selling into many, many, many of the things that you do in your restaurant. Let's have a a think about, you know, what the sales process should be. You know, you've got obviously your website, Facebook, Instagram, your menu, your servers, your story, your suppliers, your product, your unique selling proposition. One of those ways that it can help you to sell your restaurant. A lot of people think that their unique selling proposition is going to be that exactly that elevator pitch kind of scenario. Well, hey, you know, we cook authentic Indian food. Maybe you want to have something a little bit more exciting than that. But what about if your unique selling proposition is the tag that comes up in search engines. So when someone Googles for Indian restaurant near me, yes, a lot of people Google like that. So if theoretically I had an Indian restaurant and it was called James's Indian, then I could have, when people go searching for an Indian restaurant near me, it could have James's Indian and I might be in the list, you know, hopefully it's number one because, you know, that would be pretty cool. But next to that, it could say, Melbourne's hottest vindaloo. Now, I might say, well, I'm not really that interested in a hot vindaloo, or, oh, that sounds awesome. I've got to go to James's Indian. I've never heard of the place, but Melbourne's hottest vindaloo must try that out. That sounds epic. So I click through and then, okay, so this place, they tell me that it's the hottest Indian. What's the story with that? Well, you know what? I've gone and got uh, spirit naga chilies and I make a vindaloo with those. Here's a picture of me preparing it. I've got gloves on. I'm actually wearing goggles because I don't want to get this anywhere near my eyes. It's that strong. You know, it could blind me if it went in my eyes. When you come in, you've got to sign a medical waiver. Of course, it is that hot. Blah, blah, blah. We can really tell that story because what we've got now is someone who's we've they're looking for a really hot vindaloo. I've backed it up with a picture and a little bit of a story. The person's clicked around two or three times on that web page. Google tracks that. If they're using Chrome, that information goes back to Google. And Google goes, okay, so they're looking for an Indian restaurant. I've sent them this person and they've clicked around two or three times. They've made a booking. You know what? This is the answer to the question that that person asked. So whatever that search term is, boom, Google's just going to put yours a little bit higher up there. And that is all because of the power of that unique selling proposition. Pretty cool, huh? So you don't need one, but I think it is a really powerful tool to be able to help you. And if you're looking at the marketing octopus, it's one of those arms that you want to have going for you. What we'll do is we'll leave it there and we'll come back next week with the actual process on how to create a restaurant unique selling proposition that is really going to help you drive the profitability of your restaurant. In the meantime, if you've gotten anything out of this episode, please like and share it on Facebook or wherever you happen to see it. Uh, Let all of your friends know about the podcast. Uh, Word of mouth is one of the uh, best ways that you can help us to get the word out there. And uh, most importantly, in these dark and dreary times, as the world faces up to COVID, please stay safe. 
If your restaurant is open, make sure that you really are going through all of those COVID safe steps. I know in Melbourne, when I went to see some of our customers, I've got to tell you straight up, I was a little bit horrified at how lax some of the restaurants were. There were people shaking hands, all sorts of things. Now, admittedly, this was probably about three months ago, but some pretty untidy stuff. So yeah, stay safe out there. Make sure you're socially distancing and Make sure you're washing your hands, uh, you know, all of those sort of good things that you should be in. Uh, if you're in a place where you're wearing masks, wear those masks. There's a lot of research that suggests that masks are the way to go. Apart from that, stay safe. Bye. Want more customers for your restaurant, cafe or takeout? Every month, our marketing tools and information are used by thousands of restaurant owners just like you to help them find more customers and turn them into repeat customers. All of our tools and information is designed specifically for restaurant owners. We know you don't have a lot of time to spend marketing or learning complicated procedures, so our tools are quick and easy to use. If you're looking to increase your revenue and profits or want to work less hours, check out marketingforrestaurants.com.